Good morning. I'm Hassan Giordano, and this is your DMV Daily Dose for Thursday, December 5th, 2019. It's currently partly cloudy and 39 degrees in Baltimore. Expect mostly clear skies starting in the morning. Today's high will be 42 degrees, and the low will be 35. The San Francisco 49ers have suspended their radio analysts for suggesting that Baltimore Ravens quarterback Lamar Jackson had an edge on faking handoffs in the team's 20-17 win Sunday over the 49ers because of his skin color. According to the report, the 49ers suspended Tim Ryan, who made the comments on Monday on KNBR, a Bay Area sports radio station, that, quote, Lamar is really good at that fake-off. But when you consider his dark skin color with a dark football and a dark uniform, you cannot see that thing, Ryan said, according to the report. But it appears as if the influence of quarterback Lamar Jackson and the Baltimore Ravens have reached all the way to the Vatican. That's right. Baltimore Archbishop William E. Lorry in Rome with other bishops for the area visiting the Pope in which they deliver detailed reports about their diocese presented Pope Francis with a custom-made Ravens jersey on Wednesday. The jersey, featuring Francis on the back and Jackson's number eight signature number, was signed by Jackson and coach John Harbaugh. Now, right-hander Dylan Bundy, one of the longest-tenured Baltimore Orioles, was dealt Wednesday to the Los Angeles Angels for four pitching prospects. Right-handers Isaac Matson, Kyle Bradish, Zach Peake, and Kyle Bronovic. Marilyn Matters is reporting that Maryland Democrats appear likely to go back to the future when they meet in Lanham on Saturday to select a new state party leader. The job is vacant following the resignation of party chairwoman Maya Rocky Moore Cummins, who served for 11 months before stepping down recently to enter the special congressional election to replace her husband, the late Congressman Elijah Cummings. Now, the frontrunner to replace Rocky Moore Cummings when the members of the Democratic State Central Committee gather at the International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers Local 26 headquarters is none other than Yvette Lewis, who had served as party chairwoman from 2011 to 2015. Lewis is the overwhelming favorite of party leaders and is one of two candidates to announce their intention ahead of time to seek that job. Those Central Committee members can nominate other candidates when they meet on Saturday morning. The other declared contender is Tony Puka, He's a Montgomery County businessman and frequent candidate for public office. Now, Robbie Leonard, an attorney and former Baltimore County Democratic chairman who has served as a state party secretary, had contemplated a run for the top job and even said so on social media but said that Wednesday he has too many professional and family responsibilities, so he will not be seeking the top position. The Baltimore Pru is reporting that while Baltimore City's council passed the so-called gag order bill in October, Mayor Bernard C. Jack Young, who neither vetoed nor signed the measure, now is refusing to enforce it. The bill is an illegal bill, the mayor's spokesman Lester Davis said last night. It's not enforceable at all. Now, on October 28th, the council voted unanimously to give final approval to Bill 190409, which ends the policy of requiring police misconduct victims to sign this non-disclosure agreements, NDAs, or as they are most often referred to, gag orders, in order to receive a monetary settlement. Now, with the bill on his desk, Young had the option of vetoing it, signing it, or allowing it to become law without his signature. He chose the latter. It became law, though he didn't sign it. But now Young's 2020 mayoral competitor, City Council President Brandon Scott, says that Young has a responsibility to enforce it since he allowed it to become law and does not have the right to defy the city council in this way. It must be enforced, he said. The city council absolutely has the authority to stipulate the terms by which city funds and taxpayer dollars are spent. Scott continued. Now, speaking of the brew and City Council President Brandon Scott, 
They are also reporting on two city council leaders, one of them, Scott, who have called for a review of contracts that Baltimore government has entered into with businessman J.P. Grant, with one calling the procurement system wide open to bribery. In a letter sent this evening, Council President Scott asked the Inspector General to conduct a formal review of the awarding of all city contracts to James Preston J.P. Grant from 2014 to 2019, with findings shared with the public. Now, the IG, Isabel Mercedes Cummins, confirmed tonight that she received Scott's request and is taking it under review, but she declined to, to comment any further. Scott said that he took the action because cleaning up city government and restoring public trust is his top priority. He said that he has returned $4,500 that Grant Capital Management contributed to his campaign committee in previous years, and his action comes a day after the Baltimore Brew wrote a detailed story that we premiered right here on the DMV Daily Dose about Grant's financial relationships with ex-mayor Catherine Pugh, who has admitted in her federal guilty plea that the businessman handed her a $100,000 check to help her buy a second house. Now, a group of correctional officers found themselves shackled and dressed in orange jumpsuits while being escorted into Baltimore Circuit Courtroom yesterday. A day at the Baltimore City State's Attorney, Marilyn Movesey's office announced indictments against 25 people working in the correctional system. They appeared in court where a prosecutor sought to have them held until trial. This is being reported on by the Baltimore Sun. But Circuit Court Judge Karen Freeman declined as the defendants were called briefly to stand before her alongside a temporary defense attorney, freeing all of them on their own recognizance. Freeman said that she understood the seriousness of the charges, but pressed Hudak, who was the prosecutor in the case, saying that her decision was to decide if the defendants were flight risk or posed a public, uh, a, a public safety risk. Now, the elite tactical unit worked at the Metropolitan Transit Center, MTC, the Baltimore Pre-Child Facility, the State Corrections Department's Jail Industries Building, and Baltimore City Booking and Intake Facility, downtown Baltimore. At Wednesday, at Wednesday's hearings, an agent from pre-trial services provided the court details of their personal and work background to help the judge decide whether they should be released or held on bail. Most had never been charged with any crimes before this week, though one had a prior DWI offense. At least one had prior military experience, and most had lived in Maryland their entire lives. Many of the men are married with children, and several of the defendant spouses, who are also correctional officers, sat inside the packed courtroom watching the proceedings. And just a heads up, DMV Daily News and our Value My Vote 2020 series has its next Democratic debate amongst the third district candidates. Rain Democratic candidate Rain Pryor versus Democratic Councilman Ryan Dorsey is set to take place this Monday, December 9th from 6 to 8 p.m. at Function Coworking Community Center located at 4709 Harford Road. Make sure you join us over there for this free and lively event or watch it live streamed on the DMV Daily News Facebook page. I'm your man, Mr. Politics, and this has been your DMV Daily Dose for Thursday, December 5th, 2019. For more information on the articles that I've mentioned, just go on over to our website at www.dmvdaily.news.